Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and right now I will be carving this beautiful piece of Yukon Jade. This beautiful piece came off of this, off of this much larger slab. This was a gift to me um, from someone who went to the Tucson Jima Mineral Show. Uh, it might come from my friend Roger, I'm not sure. But what did come from my good friend Roger is this much bigger slab that produces um, some material that has a little bit more of like whites and yellows in there. Some might say this is a lower quality, perhaps, because it's slightly less translucent, a little bit darker green, and the, um, the white marks in there, but I really enjoy it, and I love having a wide variety of different kinds of nephrite jades. Um, yes, also these are Yukon as well. These are a lot darker and less translucent. But they're still fantastic. Something like this, maybe three inches. I could easily get anywhere from forty dollars to two hundred dollars um, after I beat it up and braided it up. This material is a very good material um, for lapidaries looking to turn over some stuff really fast. Much like turquoise jade is extremely collectible right now. All of these. This material here, I got from my good friend Roger, who vends at the Tucson Gym and Mineral Show every year, as well as some other places. He is the person responsible for providing the material for the Jade Symposium. I believe that's in Canada. I'm not 100% sure. He also made this blade out of his material. Absolutely fantastic. Roger is pretty well known um, on this in America, and... Uh, Canada. He produces and processes some fantastic material. I don't know what kind of jade this is, nephrite jade, I mean, but I cut a big rock of it to make these book match pieces. I paid one dollar for the material, and it came in a big rock, and I processed it at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. The gentleman sold it to me so cheap because he was convinced that a casual artist might have a hard time cutting it up like I did here and grinding. And also, he probably picked it up off the ground. The miner who sold this to me was a very kind person, loves to laugh. And, um, yeah, that wasn't a special bro deal. It was a $1 for this whole batch of material. Any one of these pieces I could easily get 40 bucks for. In cab form or necklace form. Almost reminds me of Siberian. I don't think it is. I think it's um, actually some kind of American nephrite. It, has, it looks like it has some quartz or something in there. It's odd. Anyway. Nephrite jade is not to be mistaken for jadeite jade. Jadeite jade is the jade that is has become extremely collectible over the last couple of years. This is some Turkish jadeite jade. This is from Myanmar. Right here, Old Burma. This is Chinese. And this is Myanmar again, Old Burma. These are special. These jadeite um, jade rounds are actually the centers of bangles. And the story goes that um, these slugs used to litter the ground all over where they would cut the bangles. And then one day someone just went and picked them all up. Genius. <laughs> anyway, so j nephrite jade is not to be mistaken for jadeite jade, but it is the only other material that is accepted... Um, that folks accept calling jade. Uh, you know, there's, um, yeah, there's a lot of here and there with what jade, what material really is jade, but the two that you can bet your bottom dollar that will have that name is nephrite and jadeite. This is the neph. I'll be making a jadeite video sometime soon. Here's some black nephrite jade from the BC. I really enjoy this material. Here's a little polished piece here. I pay ten dollars for about two or three pounds of this material. Uh, crumbled up, but every piece here I could make double my money on, uh, even though it broke up. This nephrite jade that I got from Roger is very affordable. I might have paid ten to fifteen dollars for this big piece here. It's about a pound. And um, 
I hear from one of the bigger Jade guys on YouTube, I apologize, I don't know his name, it might be Tess or something. He does the green gold videos. I believe I heard him say that on average he sells his um, Nephrite Jade for about $10 a pound. That's a very good price. If you find that, folks, I would buy it up. There are folks who really enjoy collecting this kind of jade. Big Sur Jade is another is another variety. I do have a piece of Big Sur here, actually. I apologize, I don't know exactly where it is, but um, oh, here it is. Big Sur Jade is another type of nephrite that comes from the Jade Coast in California. I believe it's like Big Sur and that area. Uh, very collectible here in the states. So even though it's not jadeite and it's not the you know the pieces you would see in a million dollar bangle, it is still collectible. It has its place. Wyoming, Siberian, and Yukon are some of the most expensive um, and coveted nephrites. I've seen pendants carved by the Maori uh, in modern day go well over a thousand dollars for their nephrite jades with that that they call ponamu. Um, here is some very affordable nephrite jade. These are donuts that I bought at the gem show. I don't always buy pre-made things, but it was 50 cents each. And, uh, these are beautiful nephrite jades. They're not serpentine. They don't have, um, so much color play like the, uh, other jade that I have does, but that's fine by me. I actually kind of enjoy the, uh, plain jane material. It's very tough. Much harder um, than turquoise, fluorite, calcite. I believe it's harder than quartz. I'm sorry, uh, I haven't been able to test that exactly. I carve it all the time, though, and I would definitely say it's harder than quartz. And some jasper, it's definitely harder than most amethyst I've ever carved. Yeah, awesome material. I don't know exactly what piece I'm going to be carving. I know it'll be a green one. I'm uh, floating between these two. Pretty sure I'm going to work this one, though. This particular piece, again, was a gift. It's a little bit longer, maybe one tile length long, about an inch wide, and it was marked as $50. And I believe this came from the Gem Show, so this must be a very expensive piece of material. It's a shame. I don't know exactly what it's worth, but that's fine. Anyway. This has been processed just a little bit on my flat lap so I can see what I'm working with. I do that a lot to the jades. And um, so I think I'm going to go straight to the 280 wheel. I might do a little bit of 220, but then after the 280 I will be drilling, so... Alrighty. See you folks in there. Alright folks. Here's the piece I'm going to be carving. Fantastic material. Real pale at 150, 180 grit. Uh, let me wet it up for you. Show you folks more or less what it would look like right now. I was to burnish this stone. Pretty cool. A little bit translucent, not so... You can't really tell right now. Anyway. I'm going to skip the 80 and the 220. I'm going to go straight on to the 280. This is a hard stone, and if I didn't work this on the flat lap, I would absolutely have to use the 80 and 220. But I'm going to save myself just a little bit of time here. I actually see one little spot that I'm going to lick with the 220 here on the side. Hopefully soon I'll be able to show you folks in great detail exactly what I'm looking at and such. But I guess in the meantime you have to take my word for it.
All right, folks, this is coming out beautifully. You pretty much can't tell the difference, I'm sure, with, at least with my camera, between the 150, 180 to this 280. Maybe a little bit wet. You can see it got a little bit darker. It's still about as translucent as it was before. Not very much yet. It might not get translucent at all. But it's beautiful. This material did take me a little bit longer to get through the 280 than it normally would with, say, something like quartz, um, turquoise, uh, sugilite. Mm, obviously, fluorite and calcite. This material is very hard. It's much harder than steel. It cannot be drilled with steel drill bits. I'm going to be using uh, cheap diamond burrs that I got from the Johnson Brothers. They're still kicking. I'm going to keep using them until they absolutely will not drill any more holes. They're probably I'm well over 100 holes with a $6 pack. Anyway, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to be drilling using my 2.5 gallon water container. See you folks over there. Alrighty folks, I'm over here where I'm going to be drilling. I marked my stone using a sharpie after it's completely dry. If you're interested in exactly what I'm doing, check out my YouTube video on drilling using cheap diamond burrs and a Dremel. I do need a pair of pliers uh, to actually take this off, so yeah. Alright folks, that was easy enough. Took just a little bit longer than I thought it was going to because um, I was trying out different burrs and a lot of my burrs in the $6 pack are beat. I don't want to change my pack because um, for you folks I really want to know how much I can do with these. So yeah, I tell folks that this stuff doesn't really take much longer to drill than anything like turquoise or lapidolite or whatnot, those slightly softer stones. If anything, for me, I almost personally prefer drilling harder stones because I can keep a slightly more sloppy hand when I'm drilling, opposed to turquoise. If I tilt for a second, I can like mis deshape the hole or deform the hole or whatever. All right, so I'm going to go back to my EasyCab lapidary machine. I'm going to lick the holes with 80 grit for a second to take care of any blowout. I can see a little bit of white stuff around the hole there. You can even see it um, when it's wet. It's the inside of the hole or whatnot. I'm going to clean up the outside with the 220, then jump straight over to 600. I'm going to do very little work on the 280. All right. All right, folks, I went back and reamed the hole just a little bit larger for what I'm going to use this particular bead for. I think I'm going to enjoy having a larger hole. So I went into that. I'm going to lick both sides up with the 280 grit really quick before I hop on over to the 600. All right, here is that beautiful piece of nephrite jade from the Yukon, a little bit dry. And here is the stone, a little bit moist. Already looking fantastic. I know it's hard to see on this camera, but it, the translucency is definitely starting to um, be uh, noticeable. It's super nice. Going to hop over to the 1200 grit. I'm almost done. But this is such a pleasure to carve. It's making me take just a little bit longer than uh, usual. Anyway.
All right, folks. That's that. It's starting to take a fantastic luster. Getting really shiny. I don't know if this camera can pick any of it up, but all the stuff that kind of looks like orange peel is actually just the grains of the nephrite here and there coming through the surface. Uh, nephrite jade, as far as I can tell, can often grow in different um, grains. I'll try to find a better piece or example of that uh, when I go back inside. But I have one more wheel. This is taking a fantastic shine. I could easily buff this up right now. Alright folks, that's that. This piece took an absolutely fantastic polish. But believe it or not, I can take it one step further than this. I'm going to hit it with the mop. And then I'm going to take it inside and bridge it up with some black sinew. Fantastic material. Alrighty, folks. Here's that beautiful Yukon Jade Nephrite bead. I'm going to hit it with this cotton... Uh, buffer wheel, I call them off. I'll be using this Fabuluster compound. I'll be making a video of what's going on here shortly, if you don't already know from me explaining on YouTube or Facebook. Alright, folks. As you can see, this is obviously just over the top after the mop. Fantastic. I'm going to take this inside of some better lighting and show it off and chat just a little bit more about some nephrite jade. Absolutely stunning. A lot more translucent now. Anyway. Alright folks, here's that beautiful piece of Yukon jade. It's floating at around 8,000 to, uh, I'd say about 12,000 grit. Absolutely fantastic, stunning, uh, definitely translucent, it's hard for me to show you on this camera. Beautiful stone. This piece of material came from this piece of material. Um, here's another piece of Yukon really quick before I go. Big difference in the variety there. This one's much darker and has like white stuff where this one's kind of more translucent. It has some like darker green spots even though they're from the same place. Thank you Roger for being so awesome. I'm trying to convince my grandfather to compete in the Jade Symposium. I don't know if it's a competition but at least participate. Fantastic. I think they send you one of these blocks here and you carve it out. I didn't talk a lot about this stuff because um, I don't know what it is, but I do plan on polishing both sides and then putting them on a stand to show off the book match. I won't be carving off the shape, just polishing them up and putting them on like sculpture stands or building um, bases or whatnot. Beautiful book matched pieces. Alrighty. These tumbles are extra awesome. These were gifts. Australian material. Anyway, folks, this is Lapidary Dave. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be doing a video on Jadeite next. I love them both. <laughs> Jadeite and Ephraim. Thank you so much, folks. Have a great day.